The National Science Foundation has established Spectrum X, which is a center for wireless spectrum research in the United States, and they've earmarked $25 million over the course of the next five years for Spectrum X and this innovation center. And they're focused on developing new ways of sharing and managing radio airwaves. And this is a limited resource. So they're they're working on, you know, figuring out ways that we can maximize that. And um, I thought that was particularly, I thought that was of interest today. Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, as we know, Shelley, uh, 5G, you know, part of what makes the technology distinct from previous uh, generations of mobile is that it is, uh, supports what is called dynamic spectrum sharing or right. DSS. DSS. And uh, this is, you know, fundamentally the ability to share both LTE and uh, 5G uh, within uh, the same frequency band. And, you know, operators uh, really are clamoring for it. Right. And they have accelerated their adoption. There have been some high profile operators like T-Mobile who want to kick the tires more. But nonetheless, uh, for example, Ericsson indicated that 80% of the operators that they're working with are going to adopt DSS capabilities within the next 12 months. Right. And that includes, uh, you know, high profile operators like Swisscom and Telstra in Australia, et cetera. And so you could see the writing on the wall and it, it just stands to reason. It's like, okay, and if I can optimize my existing spectrum assets right. and, and bringing 5G on, I'm not having to do a trade-off or having to spend a lot more money on new spectrum just to support 5G. There, there's going to be that regardless. Uh, but this is just good news uh, for operators in the ecosystem. And I think this is actually uh, very important because now we're talking not just about millimeter wave capabilities in the gigahertz range. Now we're talking about capabilities in the terahertz range, you know, uh, this and, you know, 6G technology leveraging those uh, capabilities. So it's, it's demonstrating that uh, the, the path to innovation requires uh, these types of collaborations, requires government funding and requires uh, the ability of operators to be able to use it in the real world and knowing uh, that they have um, the confidence to adopt it that it's already been tested out and they're not having to throw darts too much to really make their spectrum assets right. uh, more optimized. And so this is just, I think, uh, another great example of you know, how collaboration uh, can make a difference, not only today, but in terms of anticipating you know, 6G, uh, 6G innovation. Absolutely. And, you know, speaking of collaboration, so with this Spectrum X, the center intends to act as a, a central point where stakeholders, researchers, industry participants, government agencies, everyone involved in this can collaborate. The goal is to educate, develop a diverse workforce. I mean, I, the part of this that's really good news to me is, you know, developing a diverse workforce, ensuring that, you know, future industries can rely, or absolutely are going to rely on wireless technologies. We need to have people who are trained in working in those fields. So I think that's really important. And another part of this announcement was that the University of Notre Dame was leading a co is leading a coalition coalition of I can get that word of 27 industries that make up a collaborative hub, and they have an initial funding of about 7.47 million. This represents the first federal funding for a national center on wireless spectrum management. This Spectrum X. Um, but that's what you want to see. It's like, you know, what AT&T is doing with the Naval Academy and what um, uh, other people are, other carriers and companies are doing with universities throughout the United States. And this coalition that is being led by Notre Dame. I mean, all of these things are so important because this is where the research happens. This is where the innovation happens. This is where the training of a new generation of brilliant people happens. And so all of that together, I think is really exciting news. Yes, I, it's, it really is, you know, leveraging all the assets out there to meet all the, you know, real business needs or, you know, real consumer needs. Uh, it includes, you know, how to leverage satellite spectrum right. in order to make, you know, the wireless fabric more effective. Wi-Fi, LoRa Wi-Fi, which is actually pretty key to, uh, for example, digital twinning uh, technology. So as you can see, uh, this is all very important. And uh, I think uh, the fact that it's taken this long uh, for, for it to be established is uh, slightly surprising, but it's most welcome. And, it, yeah. and I, I think all the examples we just incited here demonstrate why. You know, this yeah. clearly is something that is required. <sighs> 
Well, and beyond industrial uses, what, you know, to me is really cool about Spectrum X is that, you know, they indicate they're particularly focused on public good use cases mm-hmm. and for science and for defense. And, and you know, one goal of this initiative, this coalition is, and the budget allocated here is ensuring that the U.S. has leadership in, in future wireless technologies and systems and really understanding how to most efficiently and effectively use and share these spectrum resources. So I thought it was pretty cool. 